Before we begin, um, this is actually volume two of uh, this specific video. The reason why this is volume two is because my first video got posted, the owner, Steve's Auto Services, messaged me privately and sorted legal action, claiming defamation of character. I, in turn, went to my attorneys and I played the entire video. And the video you're about to watch is 100% factual and can be proven in a court of law. This is my personal experience and most likely many other people's experience based on um, previews that I've seen and obtained privately after sharing my story. This has been one of the worst experience I've ever experienced ever when it comes to my car. Here's a bit of background guys. So, so initially I was looking for a general service center. So my car is officially out of service with um, VW. I've got a VW. One day I'm just driving somewhere in Deep River, uh, southern suburbs Cape Town and I drive past Steve's Auto Services and I'm like, okay, cool. Let me just stop the video just here. This background picture that I chose, I never took this picture. This I got off the Steve's Auto Service website. This is right around the corner from me and Uber will cost like 40 bucks, 50 bucks up and down, whatever. So I shouldn't have a problem with dropping it and then going to work from home thereafter. Luckily, I have the option to work from home. Firstly, the number on the sign outside is incorrect. So guys, let's just stop the video here. This number that I called, no one wants it. Matter of fact, it didn't even ring. There's a landline. Then you go to the to Google to see uh, what the actual number is. It's a completely different number. That already gave me a red flag. Cool. Number two is I asked like, cool. Hey guys, do you guys do services? The communication is purely via WhatsApp. Next thing you know, I get a a response a few moments, hours later, whatever. Hi there, Sherwin. Blah blah blah. Yes, we do services. The major service will cost like three thousand something bucks for the major service. Be in mind, I never had an issue with my car before taking it to Steve's Auto Services. Um, so I went there with a car that was working perfectly fine, and that's the beginning of this horrendous nightmare. I'm like, cool, Steve, how much would it be for um, a, a, a timing belt change? He says, now nah, it's like 6,800 and something. And I'm like, cool, you know, I've been saving up. I want my car to be solid because my car's paid off. And I want to, you know, make sure that it's in working condition smoothly. No small things creeping up and, and, and. Anyway, cool. I asked him for the aircon regas and the total bill comes to 11,080 rand. Forking out 11,080 rand just like that, it's, it, you know, it, it does a little bit of, you know, it's, it, it's a big amount. It's a big amount for the average job. Anyway, I'm like, now you know, cool. I'm a responsible guy. Let's do it. Let's, let, let's go. Perfect. I, I, I take my car in. I'm immediately greeted with um, Steve himself walking through the shop helping assisting i was like okay cool that's nice man i like when the owner gets involved as well and um what i noticed was they didn't give me an eta immediately um as soon as i walked in the guys look flustered they look like they're just like they 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 super busy everything is just zooming fast it's just the, you know it's it's all over the place i'm like cool it's good so this means they were they reputable they're busy they got people coming in and out and 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 i drop my keys off um immediately i'm like cool normal all the other places I've ever taken my car to, Volkswagen, um, uh, um, another privately owned company the year before, they all say, listen, dude, do you need a lift home? They never did this. I still made a joke. I'm like, oh, cool, I guess I'll Uber. He's like, yeah, 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 no, no, no. Back in the day, you know, you had to walk. I'm like, check this guy out. Perfect. I'm chilling at home. Drop my car at eight, mind you. And eight goes by, 10, 11, 12, two, Four. Now I'm like, cool, I never got an ETA, how long is this going to take? So I reached out to them, the same number that I got the WhatsApp from. Um, I reached out to them and they're like, yeah, no, nah, sorry, man. Uh, we have to uh, keep the car overnight and, and, and. Now this is the part where it gets super interesting. I open car track and I see the only time that I have um, seen the ignition go on for the entire Monday that I took it in is it was me that was the only time that the car went on for the entire day i'm like cool i understand fully understand so what coming someone told me the timing belt takes like five four hours you know to correctly mount and collaborate i don't know you know i watch a youtube video it's 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 i can't do it i don't have the tools so fair enough kudos to you all the best let me know how it goes perfect i wake up the next day i log in again to see if they um if they put my car on nine o'clock and then eventually ten o'clock i see the car goes on 
I'm like, okay, cool. They're actually working on my on my car. Still no comms from them. Not one bit until I reached out, right? And then I see the last ignition um, was on at 12. Perfect. 12 o'clock, we're chilling there. And I'm like waiting for the call. I'm like, sweet. So I reach out to Steve. Hey, Steve, um, I see it is the next day. Mind you, I'm watching everything via car track. Steve tells me. Okay, guys, let's pause the video here. As you can see, I was about to play the voice note, but after speaking to my attorneys, even though my goal here is to maintain clarity on the situation and be transparent as much as possible, it's a gray area, even though the person sent you the voice note. So, to make this video and this specific review foolproof, I'm about to paraphrase exactly what they said. So Steve goes on to say, ah, nah, Sherwin, no stress. Um, we've uh, just done with your car. We are about to take it for the test drive and we're gonna uh, write you the invoice. And yeah, we're just about done. Um, no stress. They don't go for the test drive. They get back to me. And man says, yeah, everything looks good. You can come and collect. I'm like, okay. That was a little bit of a of a lie there. You must be super busy to just blatantly lie like that. Perfect, I come, I Uber there, drive home, and I start to notice some slight shakiness. I'm like, okay, cool, it's probably me. Let me just, you know, adjust my thing. It's not that bad. The next day, I have to go drive somewhere far, and I'm driving on the highway. Every single gear shakes. So I'm driving and it shakes. I'm driving, second gear starts to shake as soon as you start cruising. It just, it just starts to, um, um, to shake. I go online, I Google, I've just installed a new timing belt and my car starts to shake on every gear. A simple idiot can Google this. Google spits out the first thing. Your timing belt was installed incorrectly and you need to take it to the mechanic immediately. Symptoms could cause your piston to hit your valves if the timing belt is not correctly installed. And I'm like, what? I'm driving a hundred on the highway. Immediately where I need to go, I'll head back home and I send a voice note. I'm like, yo man, um, like, listen, my car's shaking and it feels unsafe. First thing man tells me is like, while I was driving, was it did that the exact same thing you know can i just cut here so if this did it with him how did he feel comfortable giving me the car um knowing full well that there's an issue anyway and then he said that um it smelled like exhaust and smelled like rotten egg or something like that and now man advised me that i need to go get a decat for those of you guys that don't know what a decat is i need to take away my catalytic converter um, out of the original Volkswagen parts go to Powerflow and put in a new exhaust pipe essentially and um, after that once that is removed I can come back to Steve's auto services and um, then only he would uh, fix my car uh, and 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 so essentially he's telling me to spend more money above the 11,080 rand um, and then after I spend more money by what I'm properly assuming as his friend um, come back to him so he can sort out my issue so I'm like no 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 dude no 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 I, I, I refuse to do that firstly I came to you with a fixed car. The car was fixed, completely fixed. And now you're telling me I must, I must replace the exhaust after you change the timing belt. I'm like, no, man, look, I'm trying to put two and two together here. This doesn't make sense at all. This was on Wednesday, mind you. They had my car for Monday and Tuesday. Now my car's not drivable on Wednesday. Man tells me, yeah, let's bring it back on Friday. Uh, let's put it on the diagnostic. Um, he goes on to say that something might not be 100% plugged in when they plugged in all the stuff and they put the timing belt uh, on. Uh, he says that uh, the Volkswagen plugs are flimsy and, and, and. And he also goes on to say that um, they, uh, they might have uh, left some water on the engine head. Uh, so they might uh, he need to blow that out. Like random, random things that obviously the average Joe like you and I won't even know what he's talking about. Like, um, I'm not a mechanic, but I trust these guys that has the RMI logo all over the building to like um, know what they're doing. Friday morning comes, I'm there 10 to. Perfect, I park in there with a the mindset like, listen, I need my car for the weekend. This is unacceptable, it's been a whole week that I can't get my car and uh, it's, 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 look, I don't know what's going on. This guy take a laptop, go to my car, 
tell me oh yeah now you're right um we can see the uh, there's a little thing that we didn't clip in properly and whatnot but we're gonna need to hoist your car up and um it might take two to three hours and i'm like okay cool do your thing man don't they tell me no uh, we don't have any lifts available and I'm like, what? What does that mean? He's like, no, look here. Um, all these cars that you see around you is, uh, it's it's waiting for parts, and we, I can't I can't move them. And at this point, I'm boiling. Eh? Firstly, they don't contact me. Secondly, they lied to me that they tested uh, drove my car. Otherwise, they would have seen this. Thirdly, there's no professional etiquette. You told me to come on Friday. So if you didn't find an issue. You didn't have to fix my car, right? But you found an issue and you had no time or no space available to fix my car. So now automatically it's like, what is going on here? Um, and throughout the entire process, they made everything feel like it's, 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 it's my problem. I'm going to sort out this shit. Like, yeah, no, I don't know what to tell you, man. And then everybody goes quiet. Like, there's no backup plan. These people don't have a backup plan. They don't even have lifts home. Look, at this point, I paid my 11,080 rand. So now this is post service you know post payment service you know after you pay what's the service like anyway so now i can i'm starting to feel like an annoying client now i'm i'm, I'm at this point i'm already like do i even want to take my car back to these people so i asked them listen if i go somewhere else how much would this cost they're like now nah, upwards of three thousand and but now nah, bring it back to us man you know we can we can sort out this problem we just need to um um i don't know what what, what mechanical jargon so i'm thinking to myself you know what no fine i'll bring it to you on monday because this is what uh, when they asked me to bring it monday comes day seven of not having a car monday comes i'm driving this shaky ass car to this place every time i drive this car to this place it feels like it's gonna break one thing i noticed on monday was that they put this nonsense at the back and they took off my the place that i serviced it lost and they put their nonsense on there and the car's not it, it's in worse condition you i was so pissed eh? not the point um so i get there monday man tells me okay cool pull in here on this lift come 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 pull in on this lift here man tells me i'm showing we have a problem here i'm like <laughs> At this point, I'm like, 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 have you ever been so pissed that you just start laughing? Like, you can't understand what the fuck's going on. Man says, uh, yeah, we have load shedding from 8 till 10, so we can only actually start working on the car at 10. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not waiting here. Let me go home. Now I'm chilling at home here, and I won't tell you a word of a lie. I am, I'm solidly anxious now. I'm like, no, nah, man, did I leave my car in the hands of these people? Like, what Like, like, what if they're taking out original parts and putting in, like, you know, <laughs> like, fake Chinese parts or some nonsense like that? Guys, let me just intervene here. This is speculation. Uh, it's not an accusation. I'm not accusing them of doing it. I'm just speculating. At this point, like I said, I'm a bit anxious. So this is what's going through my mind. 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, things are just, they're not communicating with me, they don't tell me if they started, it's 4 hours, you see this day, just job takes 2 hours, your your shop is empty, I was there. Oh yes, at this point, I, I told a um, man that, listen, on Friday, on, on the Friday before, listen, I have car track, I can see that you never test drove my car, and, and the man, after lying to me on Tuesday, yeah, no, no, test drove it, you can come get it, on Friday, he's like, no, but sure, when I don't have to always test drive the cars, and I'm like, before I continue, these people are RMI approved. So the second value in the RMI is integrity and honesty and all that nonsense. Firstly, these people lied. Fast forward to Monday, I'm waiting for my car. Once again, I reach out. I'm like, yo, Steve, um, do you have perhaps um, to have a ETA on like, you know, how, um, how are we looking? I see my car hasn't started uh, all morning since the time I left it there. Man tells me, so once again, in the spirit of not uh, using someone else's voice notes, he goes on to tell me that, um, hey Sherwin, after, once again, I got, um, I reached out first, and uh, he goes on to tell me that one of his uh, components of his timing uh, toolkit has uh, broken. So, on my car, obviously. Whose car is going to break on, right? At this point, everything's going to happen on my car, and uh, that he will have the car ready by the end of the day two o'clock three o'clock 
Four o'clock, two hours later. Remind you, we have one hour left in the business day. I asked him, yo, are you still um, gonna hold to your promise and uh, you know, deliver, um, be done with the car by the end of the day? Man messages me, tells me, Sherwin, we are currently busy with your vehicle in a condescending tone. Uh, just relax, my friend. I'll let Sherwin take it away after this. I'm like, relax. I'm like, buddy, I haven't been without the car for seven days. I have work and shit I need to do. And you have the nerve to tell me relax after knowing full well what you've shown me for this entire week. So four o'clock comes and I'm chilling here and they're not getting back to me. 10 past four, 20 past four and I'm like, nah, fuck that. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get an Uber. I get in the Uber, get there and I chill. They're still working on the car, half past four, they're still working on the car, quarter to five, five o'clock, they're still working on the car. At this point, everybody's looking flustered, they're trying their best, they're having issues. Five, ten past five, man walks into his office where I'm sitting, talking on the phone as well, he's like, yeah, okay, cool, the timing is, um, is, the timing belt is finally on. And I'm like, okay, cool, now awesome, man. And now obviously it's past five, the workers are getting a bit, uh, moody and they want to go home you know half past five comes uh, I've been there now an hour because I want to watch them because I have a feeling that we're gonna tell me no sorry man we can't do it today my apologies the man takes my car for the drive comes back gets out man shakes his head I'm like what's it uh, what's it now Steve he's like well yeah, it, 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 at, at 3,000 RPM, it just slows down and your um, uh, your EPC light came on and they all baffled at this point. I don't know how the f to contain myself. I'm chilling there like, nah, man, you got to be kidding with me. What is this RMI um, approval rating if you don't even know what the EPC uh, as as I know it, there's electronic power control uh, system that does something and, 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 and. Now we're chilling there and once again, they're not giving me solutions. They're saying, no, 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 we're going to call someone. Uh, we're going to ask if they, and they get on the call immediately with some counterpart up over in Kraifontein or something. And this guy's like saying, yeah, no, no, he stripped a, a car also five times. And at that moment, I realized these people don't know what the f they're doing. They stood there and I'm asking like, cool, what now? And the man says, nah, look here, we're going to contact uh, this person, that person, and I will get back to you. I will get back to you. I told him, nah, dude, look here, I'm, I'm going to take this to Volkswagen, and uh, cost-wise, we're not there yet, but I must now go pay the actual dealer to fix this guy's problems. I will rather pay Volkswagen like another 10,000 Rand to properly fix my car than go back to that place. I do not recommend their services. Two weeks later. So the Monday I am, um, I get my car from Steve's auto services. Steve told me, listen, they would get back to me. Uh, they're just going to ask a few friends or connections here and there on like, uh, you know, what the issue is, why the EPC light has now come on, right? I let the weeks go by. I wait. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But I don't just wait. The very next day, I call Volkswagen and I tell Volkswagen, Hey Volkswagen, no, I'm just joking, I never said it in that way. I'm like, yo guys, my EPC light came on. Um, is there any way I can book my car in for like um, a check-in and uh, confirm like, like what's happening? So I don't tell them what previously happened with Steve's auto services and the timing belt uh, mishap and, and, and. I just told them my EPC light came on. Anyway, they told me, look here, uh, sir, the only time we have available is 10 days after I called, you know? So it's the next week, Thursday. Anyway, um, I'm like, okay, cool. My car can drive, it just doesn't have power to go over 3,000 revs. So Steve fitted the timing belt properly, but for some reason, my left light doesn't work and my EPC light is on. Cool, eventually, uh, Thursday comes, I take it to Volkswagen, I check it in, greet it with the utmost professionality, if that is even a word, and uh, I check my car in. Cool, um, the lady told me they'll be in contact. The same day, they in contact, I see that they have switched on my car numerous times during the day, actually every hour upon the hour, and um, ultimately they came back and told me, there's something wrong with my timing, col uh, col col correlation? 
my timing correlation yeah I don't, anyway not the point that was the issue and i was quite impressed because i never told them anything about my timing belt they said listen unfortunately this is a job where they're gonna have to strip the side of the engine open or the you know and uh, fix what they need to fix and uh, the car's gonna have to stay overnight and it's looking to be 2300 rand at this point and i'm like you know what no okay cool it's not 10,000 rand like i said like i would be willing to pay the next day come and uh, they told me cool car's done and uh, to fix the light bulb it's another 600 bucks i go to volkswagen cars in mint condition it's driving back to normal there's no power restriction and um i pay my 3k on day 14 i wait the morning and i'm like cool i'm gonna message him this message i'm gonna put it on the screen i'm gonna put it on the screen and you guys can pause this video to read the message after that message steve says that uh, cool he wants a picture of like the 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 invoice that volkswagen sent me i told him listen it's just fair that you reimburse me with not the whole six eight because i know you know my car was there for like three times and this manpower needs to be paid but just reimburse me for the amount of money that i spent to fix your problem after i sent him the proof of payment that i paid to volkswagen um i never heard from him again immediately a part of me is like these people are trying to make ends meet and, and 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 i understand it but my thing is that for two weeks as people left me in the lurch knowing full well i wasn't driving a a a vehicle that um, was up to standard when i gave it to them and they couldn't care less to get back to me um, their communication skills is out the window they they don't care the after sale they got the eleven thousand rand from me and right now i'm just that annoying customer like i told you guys before i met that i met annoying person that yo can this guy just go away and uh up until the very end whether it be the timing belt um toolkit that uh, broke whether it be the phase two uh the phase three lifts that wasn't available on the friday that i went whether it be the load shedding that happened when i was there waiting for my car whether it be the epc light coming on and they couldn't understand what was going on they never had a backup plan they didn't know what they were doing and they legit wanted to get rid of me to a point where i didn't want to take my car back there so in all honesty guys i wouldn't recommend these people two weeks later so guys just to end this video off um i just want to put on steve's auto services google rating so they have a 4.4 rating as you can see i'll put it on the screen i've organized his rating from low to high so you can see the one stars right and there's one pattern that i've seen with um his one stars like for example if you take david for example david gave a one star review right and he noted in quite some detail that i note the owner's disingenuous response, Steve, trying to discredit another business instead of his, for his unethical behavior, repairing my Honda. I still have the invoice with me, exclamation mark. Avoid this business at all costs due to the owner's incompetence and dishonesty. Unprofessional and lacking in mechanical knowledge. This is exactly what I was going through as well, guys. After requesting Steve to fix a rattling tappet noise, that I pointed out, he completely misdiagnosed the fault. Just like with me, he blamed my catalytic converter instead of um, fixing the timing belt that he replaced and started to get issues, right? Um, charging me over 3,000 and while, it, while the rattling tap remained unfixed, he then would not release the car until I had paid. Despite his mistake, he also refused to give me a written warranty on the wrong job that he had done and then plastered his stickers all over my car. Guys, the exact same type of buzz, right? Today marks the day, um, it's been two weeks since he threatened to sue me. Four weeks since I told him, dude, I just paid Volkswagen 3000 and the guy is missing. Uh, that's David and look at Steve's response. Hi David, we have no record of your vehicle coming to our workshop. Now I'm going to put another review of a dissatisfied customer. Andre, for example, a service establishment that serves their own needs and not that of the clients. Don't waste your money with inexperienced people. Second person to say that this person has no experience. And the second time, once again, Steve responds, Hi Andre. We don't have any record of serving um, of you ever being in our um, um, establishment. Let's go to the third review. 
This dumb guy just dropped my call in my ear. One star. Once again, Darwin, please tell me more. We don't recall ever dealing with you. So guys, honestly, from what I can see here, all his one star reviews, he acts as if he never met you. He doesn't know you. Let's go on to Neville. Two stars. He never said anything, he just gave two stars. Once again, the response is, we don't recall working on your vehicle. Constantly. Then another guy, Roger, which also gave three stars. You can see that Steve responds, hi Roger, we have no record of you coming to us. These reviews make 100% sense. Don't go to this guy. When he threatened to sue me, he said, listen, um, I was ready to work this out. I'm a busy guy. That was one week after I've sent him that you owe me 3,000 Rand. At the end of the day, he was never going to work it out. He's just a scalamo brew that is, he, he, he doesn't get back to you once he messes up your car. And the final words that I have is don't take your car to Steve's auto service. It's not worth it. You will probably have parts missing, you'll probably have your EPC light coming on and because he doesn't know what the f*** he is doing, he is just going to let you go to Volkswagen and fix your car somewhere else. No um, professionalism, no um, corporate etiquette, he doesn't care about the customers and this all in a country where the South African citizens are already struggling with a lot of other um, things. We don't need people like Steve's Auto Service to come in and further mess with South African citizens.